Yeah. What do you think? I like it, mate. Quite smart. So we had a new sprocket. Yeah. Off another vehicle. Probably had a final drive, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the final drive matches the sprocket, so I guess so. It's had a poorly. It's, hey, it's very, very tidy, isn't it? It is very tidy, I like it a lot. Big fan of the Turek too. And to be fair, the paint job, the last bloke that painted it, done a real nice job. Like, he's even done the little arrows on the hooks. Look at me. Details. Yeah. Once the. Uh, What's the long bin on there? Yeah, which we've got, got a couple of there, haven't we? Yeah. I'm not so keen on the the fire. No, no, I don't think it's meant to have that on there, is it? No. I mean, especially... Wants a new exhaust skin, doesn't it? That's had a nasty. Yeah. Everyone catches the exhaust on these, don't they? It's not like they stick out that far. It's the offside, mate. It's yeah, but the pitch, don't you, can't people them in drive. Have we opened the front door? Uh, it's pretty tidy, but it has got some leaks. I'm going to need a hammer. Shall we explore the turret? Let's explore the turret. Go on, you explore the turret. Oh, Leatherman. Didn't even get the Leatherman out of the packet. You're too eager. That's, that's open, mate. It's also probably ruined your uh, bout. Oh, she's tidy. Oh, she is, to be fair. She's got the okay glue in there that you can see. That's always a good sign. It is leaking quite the amount of uh, steering fluid, isn't it? Do you reckon it's steering? I'd say so. Yeah? What reckon could be out of a pipe gone? Well, I'd say either that or one of them's not done up tight. Mm. Wiggle the pipes. Not loose mm. on the unions, oh. are they? Well, pack's coming out. Simple yeah. as that. Just, uh, no, very, very tight, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Let's have a little look in the turret, shall we? Oh. Oh. <sighs> you, you out the hatch? Yeah, mate. I'll, uh, I'll come round. <sighs> What can you see out the top? Oh, it's a lovely view. You can see that most days, to be honest. <laughs> Best job I ever had. Well, we got some, got some shells. Yeah, look at that. Three round mag, mate. Tell you what, you can't see much out this knot, I'll wait. Got a colour oh, on it. <laughs> got radios back here. Yeah. All the periscopes. A lot, mate. It's proper cool, we've got comms. Mm. Smoke left and right, discharges. Oh, it's raining, I'm gonna close this out. Yeah, keep the weather out. Oh, it's come with a hammer. Any vehicle that comes with a hammer, you know he's gonna be a good vehicle. And the hammer is made in England. That's even better. Just gets better and better. Oh, got ammo bin. Somebody's got the best map out. Hang on, hang on, hang on, there'll be a lever. Oh, I know nothing about it. Mate, I don't fucking know. There you go. That's just a cover, is it? Must be. Yeah, this looks dangerous. No idea what we're looking at here. It's deactivated, so it ain't gonna be far or not. You get your bullet, yeah. ram it in there, ready to fire. Ready? There, that's what the hammer's Three, for. Three, two, one, <laughs> fire. Round out. Oh, hang on. I got that. Oh, in. yes. Let's look at these. Hang on, let's take a fucking hammer. You look like you go snorkeling. Oh, well, yeah. To be fair, I feel like I should be on a submarine of the Titanic. Oh, look, it's a bit soon again. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you can't see jack shit out of it. Oh, there we go. That's better. I think it needs a machine gun putting in it. Pulled me own hair. Yeah, cool, cool, isn't it? Cool. Mm -hmm. Right, do you know where we are? Uh, well, I think we're near Farm 8. Yeah. Um, which is quite close to the impact area. Ooh. I don't know what happens there. Uh, impact in what? I don't know, hopefully not me. <laughs> <laughs> DZ, drop zone, drop zone alpha. Yeah. Drop zone bravo. Is there a... I mean, there's no more map on this side. Fucking Jesus. Are you not going upside down? 
No, it's right is the right way up. Where's my place? Brecon. There's Brecon. Where's that? Two miles from here, mate. Black Mountain. That's racist, surely. We'd better can't get, have that. We'd, change we'd that. we'd better mute that out. In this day and age. Mm. Usk. We're in Russia over here somewhere. Mm. Or, that's no, a that's submarine, Kursk, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah, it's Kursk. It's Kursk. No, it's Kursk. It's not Usk. The River Usk. No, Usk, that's electric vehicles. That's probably where he gets his batteries from. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, that's well, there Usk. is a hydro dam there, by the way. Oh, right, that's where there, it's yeah. yeah, yeah, hydroelectricity. Yeah, and then there's Cray Reservoir. Shall we just rip the pack out and do what we actually know what we're doing? Probably, yeah. That's probably the best Stop idea. Stop pretending we're yeah. soldiers, because we know uh, about that. Who said we were pretending? Just slip it in there, I'll mate. Put that down there, and then slip it Oh, out. how nice is that? This weird trade that we're into. So uh, these actual vehicles, just like this one, Stuart, Stuart uh, the boss of Armageddon, he uh, he set up a business after watching Kelly's Heroes and had the great idea. It was one of the scenes where um, they fire a paintball round at the back of a tiger, and uh, that gave him the idea to buy a couple of these out of Withams and he put some turrets on um, of some fox. I think they were foxes. Right? Yeah, fox armor cars. Yeah. He made his own turret, he made his own system, uh, compressed air system that fired paintballs, and he set up tank paintball driving. It's the only place in the world that ever did it. And me and Jack both were farmers, sort of, well, come from farming backgrounds, we knew nothing about tanks. And we both pretty much started at similar times working for Stuart on, on these. And um, yeah, so we, we, we'd run them at the weekend with customers, you know, doing training and shooting and driving and that sort of thing. And then through the week, we'd be taking the engines out and repairing them. So uh, we've, we've got a lot to uh, thank thank the old uh, FV432 for. We had a lot of fun doing it. We had also a lot of terrible times doing it. Oh, yeah, it. yeah, and, uh, yeah. You know, I think Stuart will also say he's pulled his hair out plenty of times with these things, as did we. But we learned a lot and we had a lot of fun, really. So it'll be mm. a bit like old toys playing with this one. So. We're going to do a pack lift, we thought we'll show you, it's probably the one of the easiest things in the world to do, um, but uh, people get it, people won't winch about these saying they're, they're unreliable, but they're not really an unreliable vehicle, they're a really good vehicle, but people winch say, oh if the starter breaks you've got to take the engine out, like it's a big deal, like, mm. it's a 40 minute job take. Yeah, it, it ain't too long, if, but... If you're going steady, so uh, you know, it's not a problem, and when the engine's out you can get everything, so you know, they're, they're pretty reliable, and we used to use them all week at Stewart's and all weekend and had crews running them day in, day out. Mm. He's done that for, well, getting on for 15 years, I think, now, hasn't oh, But it's longer than that. Yeah, and he's still got the two vehicles that he bought that started the whole business. He's still got them in his fleet and he still runs them. Yeah. So anyone that says these are junk, don't believe you. No. Whereas no. you look at people that mess around with C CVRTs, you know, the, the clutches are made out of cheese, you know, the, if you get one person that can't drive it, your clutch is bust, the gearbox is too complicated, or too rubbish, you can't get people in, obviously, these are a big vehicle, you can get big people in, you can, you can get pretty much, you know, people that want to drive tanks are usually big, uh, no good if you can't get them in the hole, like mm. CVRTs, they're made for bean poles like me, um, but these, you can let anyone drive, they're automatic, they're dead easy, like, a mm. baby could drive one of these. Yeah. You know, uh, they're, mm. they're a nice, easy, and forgiving vehicle to drive. So anyway, enough crap. Yep, good idea. Let's we'll uh, we'll get on with the tutorial of taking the engine out, shall yeah, we? Yeah, right. tutorial. Okay, cool. So on the inside, quite simply, you take all all of this panelling off, 
Um, so these are the piano boards. These come off. They've just got little... Um, half turn. Yeah, half turn located things that will just lock it in. The row of bolts here. The front one's a little bit more complicated. You have to take this out. That's the engine dipstick, the engine oil dipstick. Take the um, gear selector, that's the word. Oh, I thought it was the steering Take wheel. that out. And, well, close. Uh, the night vision scope box, that comes out just to make it easier to pull this panel out. And then there's bolts all along here, along the top, down the side. And then there's a 10 mil strip along here. Oh, well, we call it a 10 mil strip because it's all 10 mil bolts, or it used to be, but it's not. Well, they're not 10 mil, um, they're, though, they're, they're 7 16s, 7 16s. it's original. Um, so there's a strip down here that you take out. Um, you don't need to take that out, but it does when you lift the engine out. It does sometimes Makes get in the way. Easy, so right? for two minutes worth of work, you may as well take it out. Um, and that's it in here. So we'll uh, we'll record me doing that because I'll do all the work, obviously. Naturally. And um, then, yeah, we'll show you the, the, uh, the outside, outside and the top because they're the uh, slightly more interesting bits. I don't know about that. Well, <laughs> Keep your finger off the trigger till you want to kill the tank. There we go. Easy. Slide that down there. I'll tell you what, she looks amazing. Big strong boy. That is a clean engine. It is, isn't it? I was not expecting it to be that clean. I mean... I reckon it might be broke, but the clock says it's done five hours. No, it had a recon engine in it. Five hours. That's worn out then. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever had out. one that that uh, that new. No, I think that might be the newest one I've ever seen. It, it does look rather nice. It does, yeah. Although there is some leaks. Oh, I don't some believe fairly, it. Fairly it is not like... Ones. Huh? Some fairly majorish ones by the looks of it. Where? There's it. Although, to be fair, it probably isn't that bad, actually. It can't be that bad. Look how clean it is. Knock it off. Right, I'm going to turn the fuel tap off because that is something. It's yeah, easy to forget. So, the fuel pump is under my knees, and here's the tap. I'll turn that off because when I disconnect the fuel lines in a minute, It'll just drain the fuel tanks. There's one there and there's one there. And I don't want fuel everywhere, especially when it's a deer, so. Oh, I'll leave you do that. I'm gonna do the outside. So, once you take the two piano boards off, you can move on to the bits that join up onto the engine. So you've got the uh, rod that comes in from the gear selector. That has to be taken off. There's a little pin that comes through just here with a little uh, split pin on it so I'll take that off and then you take the ring of bolts off and then there is also just down there that bit just there is the electrics to it so you just unscrew that and then that whole rod comes up the whole setup comes out and uh, you take all that out and then the only other thing you have to do in here is collapse the oil pipe you can pop that down so it lowers through this bit pull this panel out and then take that lot out and put a rag in it so you can't get any shit in there and, oh, and then to take this panel out, there's this row of bolts, this row of bolts, and this row of bolts. All that comes out nice and easy and uh, fairly quick, to be honest, especially when you've got power tools, which I don't know whether they would have had in the army. So that might be where we're getting some of our speed. And then uh, this is the little bar I was talking about, this one here. We'll take that out as well just to help. Out of there. One handed is not the system, but there we go. That comes out of there. Why is that bent down and cut? No idea. Weird. Oh, it looks nice, I don't know. Yeah, but why is it smooth? No, maybe he was bored of cutting himself on it. Right, rip that shit out. Gently. Oh, you've got the lovely job of undoing all the prop shaft bolts. Yeah, to be fair, I'd forgotten about these two parts. Yeah. So, the next bit to take off is this accelerator linkage. Um, just undo this part here, and there's three here. That's easy. And then um, the bar and the prop shaft. 
Pop Shots and Ways of Treatment. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Enjoy. Um, yeah. I mean, normally what you can do is you can do the top few, and then you can push the vehicle forward so that the others come to the top, and then do them from the top. Why do that when you can struggle? Like can struggle. Them? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's what we prefer. That's exactly what I prefer. So. so with the accelerator, you don't actually have to undo that bit of linkage there. What you can do, which isn't so easy with one hand, just fold it forward like so. Oh, it's out of the way then, because that steering box doesn't come out. So you can fold it right up there and out the road. Easy, like that. Socket on the impact gun, yeah. so we don't give a shit. Basically, if you half turn them, they're always a little bit worn out and knackered. That's the front bit loose. Now onto the rear bit. I'll do I'll do some up like that. There we go. That's done. Beauty. Yeah, you don't need to the Yeah, you can just pull it right off, but especially when you've got a folding that lifts 15 ton. Here we go, peeps. touch oh go on it's all right it's gone it's gone now what go on you clear goodbye look at that what a beautiful thing that makes life a lot easier all right so then the only things to take out on top of these two bolts here the two at the other end and then that front panel along here which you undo these ones for that one that one that one and that one and then that is ready to lift from the top. It's a bit, bit of a balancing act. Yeah. Same on the top of this rad with this grid. You can easily put your heel in and fall off backwards. It's nice, isn't it? It's, it's a very nice example of a shit heap. No, they're not. They're quite nice, to be fair. Yeah, they're nice. 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 Yeah, is it work zone? So, uh, what are you doing here then, buddy um, old pal? Disconnecting the fuel lines. Oh yeah. If it looks to me like they've been put on wrong. No. I mean, it doesn't matter massively, but it ain't ideal, it ain't ideal. Now, they always leak everywhere, so. Only a touch, though. All right. Yeah, uh, this one will probably leak more. Oh, no. I always like to use the biggest adjustable with your Well, I do have the correct spanner, but to be no. honest, you were, you were looking so good. So. Everyone loves it when we use the wrong spanner, especially yeah. adjustable spanners. We need an impact adjustable spanner. Yeah, yeah, if Milwaukee could get an invented one of those, that'd be grand. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what would also be really handy is ratchet opening spanners. Yeah, you, they'd be in tits. To be fair, I have got one. You haven't got a ratchet opening spanner, you idiot. Yeah. They don't make one. I've got a ratchet star. This is. Uh, I need a bigger adjustable really for this. No, I think you should struggle. I've got it. He's doing it like I could have done that with a forty mil adjustable. Born struggling. That's what he was. Yeah. Right. So basically, there's three fuel pipes basically one feed two returns when you've got dc power for these two and you've got three that are ac and then you've got two big fat uh, alternator cables and then one uh, engine services cable and then you've got two firewire cables 
which basically when the pack catches fire tells you that you're on fire. I'm not really gonna, useful. We've never ever plugged them in because that no. system doesn't work. This is also to do with the fire suppression. Never ever seen it work. And plus it's got halon gas in it. So when it does work, it takes the oxygen out of the air and then just suffocates everyone in the vehicle. So not massively keen on that. So we don't we don't use that. No? Oh, no. That's a no, shame. It's not something we, uh, oh. we like to use. Right, I'm going to put these in the bucket. All right. Doing All right. I'm going to crack on with the prop shaft. Hey. So get in there. Get tell in everybody there. what you've what you've got on with so far. Well, I've got no end on, just on the last alternator connection, and then these two are the fire wire. I'll just rip them off now because they literally do nothing. They won't be going back on. And then what you have is God, how much thread is on that? I never know because I never ever do. Right. So then once these three are off, you've got these two parts here. There for the steering box. They go to the cooler. The cooler. And then you've got the exhaust clamp, which is one of my most hated jobs because you've got a connection there and a connection there. What's about getting it off? But putting it on, you get absolutely shit up. Quite often we have to climb inside here with your whole body to try and line it up because people bend them putting them on and then it makes it a nightmare. If they're done right, they're okay, but mm -hmm. they're often done wrong. So anyway, that's pretty much it for here. Then there's just an engine bolt down there, a hold down bolt there, and two in jacks there and one Come at the on. back. That one over there, you can see. Lift it out. Two down here, one there if it'll focus, there we go, and one there. And then there is sometimes one in the corner, and we're hoping it's not in, because most yeah. people run them with them out. But this engine so far with everything done up is leading us to believe that it will be in, which means we'll have to move that battery box down there, get the back panel off, and then get in at that. So we're, we're pleased about that, but yeah, normally we never used to put them in. Because uh, really, it's massive. I think overkill. we're just going full cowboy. We're going yeah. to pack, and I'm just going to lift it with the phone. If it feels like it's stuck, yeah, I agree. But it won't if it lifts the tank off the floor, then we know then that bolt. That bolt might be in. Yeah, yeah, cool. Time for the engine hold down bolts. Of course, this is the genuine bit of kit pull job. We're not lazy in any way. No. Wibbly wobbly. The army definitely had the army a big snap on gun. With 20 extensions. Yeah. Sometimes dealing with this length takes a bit of working out. Luckily, we're, used we're to not it. used to it. Yeah. Tell you what, you're out of a blank. Right, so that's everything out the front. All the electrical connectors, pipes for the steering are undone, the exhaust clamps undone, everything in there is done, prop shaft bolts are all out, everything else is disconnected. Good to lift. Ready. Frames on, Tom and lift. Right on. To the right. Okay. Wants to go in a bit, didn't it? You're right. Just, uh, 
doing stages. Huh? Oh, to the right. That's just not the what's it lever. You ready? Oh, she's as easy as that. We're out. Nice work. Halford's 19, mate. Is it Ratchet? No. no. Oh, well, well, I'll turn the sucky sucky thing on. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's a bit cleaner. What are you doing? Struggling, mate. I don't like you to struggle. No, it also it's also quite like like me to break stuff when I'm losing shit, so You making a big deal out of plugging this thing in? No. Done it mate. Sorry about that. They've done that the wrong way. Oh shit. That's the right hand That's doing it all. Yeah. Oh. After running it up, well, I will explain. This isn't the engine we took out of it. This is actually the original engine that came with it when the previous owner bought it from Withens. Um, and apparently, did he say that uh, it ran away or something? Yeah, don't really know. But apparently, it, it, it ran away, and uh, no, uh, no real shock that it was because before we even filmed that video, you just saw. Um, I had to take all the side off the pump and free the rack on. But what we're having an issue with, there's quite a common issue on the, on K60s, is uh, the governor gets weak, and that's because the fuel, when the rack seizes, it doesn't seize with rust, it's the fuel gums up. When, the, when an engine's been left for years, the fuel goes into about a bit of a jelly, gluey, gluey sort of substance, then it sticks all the valves, and obviously it's a hydraulic governing pump and the reason it's got that so when you rev it hard it sends hydraulic oil pressure down this pipe which then goes to this ram and works the kick down for the auto box that's why it has a stupidly overcomplicated pump on it um, and basically what happens is it uses the fuel pressure as it's revving harder to, to work the valves that obviously operate that ram and obviously govern the pump so it doesn't stall out 
Uh, and what obviously has happened is, like the like the rack that's that seized from all this gummed up fuel, so is the valve that controls the governor. So what we're actually having is when you when you crank one of these, if you film over here, so when it's not when it's not running, you first crank it. This plate here, the governor should suck that in straight away, which is the rack. And what we're having with this one is when you crank it, it's not pulling the rack in itself because the, the governor, the, the valve that's operating the governor is stuck. So it's just, it's, it's not noticing and obviously it's, it's not pulling that in now. It needs to pull it right in and actually hit this button here. And that is, that's your fuel button. So like an old, like an old um, tractor, some, some of you know, farmer people know, I used to have an old 8100 um, Ford tractor and had a Sims, Sim pump on it and when you were cold starting it you'd, you'd set it to start and you'd push a, a button in on the side of the pump which basically gave it more diesel for start up. That's basically what this is doing so the idea is it does it automatically on this, they've tried to be clever. So obviously when the, when the rack, when it starts the governor pulls the rack back and a little, it, it presses that button itself you see. But of course because the governor is not pulling the rack, it's not pressing the button and it's not starting. So when you saw it was running, it's because I was manually overriding the rack and making it start. And when it was running, the governor would work sort of, but the engine was hunting up and down and messing around. And then if you went down to sort of the low RPM to sort of tick over, it lost pressure and it just stopped. So the valve that, that works the governor is stuck in the pump. So there's no point messing around. That, that injector pump needs to come off and be stripped down. So that's the main. The main problem with this pack. Also, the uh, start stop solenoid always weak, and someone's done some sort of strange wiring, which I think we need to need to address. That the other slightly annoying problem is we had quite a quite a bad oil leak, and I actually noticed you can just see here a bit of oil coming out of that bolt there. Now, this whole transfer case I think is full of oil. And yeah, it should have some oil in it, but it should be full. And the reason I know there's a problem is because when you come around here, oil is coming out where the starter motor, if I can straight point my lollipop stick it, where the starter motor goes into the block, it was leaking down there from, from where the starter motor joins. So that says to me that this whole area is full of oil, which is likely to be the lower crank oil control steel, which will be behind the... Um, the flywheel as it were, it's not really a flywheel, but where the starter motor dogs to turn the engine. So we're gonna to have to take all this transfer case off and take the flywheel off as it were, and then check that seal out. And then the only other leak it's got, not really that bad for leaks, I noticed it was leaking down this exhaust manifold. Well, this is a vehicle we plan to take down the road and take to shows. You do not want oil running on a burning hot exhaust manifold because obviously you know what's gonna happen, it's gonna catch fire. And where that oil was coming from was the input shaft seal for the supercharger, um, which I've not done one before to be fair, but I imagine we just take this little prop shaft off here, little prop shaft there, and then hopefully we can get at it. I really don't wanna have to take, it's behind there the seal is, I really don't wanna have to take the whole blower off if we can help it. So, uh, Let's get to it. I got the pump off. So now you can see the, the rack a little bit better. Can you see the button that it presses? So you see that button there? So when you start cranking it initially, the hydraulic governor should shoot the, the rack in that presses, well I've not got it all jammed up, presses the fuel, fuel button, which gives it more power, then obviously the engine should run, and then what would happen is the governor will just keep the engine running. And obviously the more you, you give it revs, it's the hydraulic governor that, that should make that do that. It doesn't do anything until it's running, if that makes sense. But this one isn't playing ball, so I'm gonna take that to bits and rebuild it. Got the exact same problem on the other pack behind you as well. Um, so I'm gonna strip that down in a bit, take the pump off that, and we'll do both of them. Um, and then hopefully we'll have a running Abbott pack and we'll have a, 
a case which packs all the food. We made a start on doing the transfer case to take that off. We've done und undone all the bolts on that, but I can't seem to find my socket that I need to put on the front. You see, this is the best I could come up with. But I've now got my adjustable stuck and it's not really going to hold, it's going to slip off and break something. So I'm going to give up for to now, find my socket, God knows where I put it, and then get that transfer case off, mend that oil leak, then mend that oil the leak, put the injector pump back on, and then hopefully next time you see it, we'll be putting the pack back in it, all running, no leaks, all perfect. So there we go. Um, yeah, T34. We've got a lot happening with the T34 this week, so the next video will be an update on that, and I think we'll be sandblasting it, so we'll see you in the next video.